This is the Conscious Radio Network. Ooh, if the opening isn't as spooky, but we're going to get spookier. Good evening, wherever you might be. Welcome to Conscious Radio Network's True Ghost Stories. I'm your host, Reverend Dr. Paul Meckes. If this is your first time, please click like, subscri- subscribe, comment, share. And also don't forget to follow us for our regular programming wherever you listen to your podcasts. Visitors and the gifts I didn't know. Tonight, joining us, psychic medium Veronica Silva has an interesting story. And um, well, let's let's dive into this. And um, normally there's an introduction, but true ghost stories there is no introduction. We don't need an introduction. Why? Because <laughs> paranormal, metaphysical, Halloween seems to be a uh, 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 that point in in the calendar year where we purposely kind of get spooked. But it seems like that's the heightened time of the year where where the fall season comes and times of harvest. But tonight, Veronica is going to tell her story. And uh, let's go. Veronica, welcome to the show, my friend. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Appreciate You're very, it. You're very welcome. Um, so, Psychic Medium, where did mm-hmm. uh, how did this start for you? Um, the biggest part... When I was very young, I started seeing lots of activities and it was spooky, it was scary, and it was confusing because how did I know this? So it was a lot of things happening. Um, Being so sensitive, you're able to pick up things that the normal people would just, you know, overlook. And you were able to see, hear voices, see people um experience like different sensation like just feelings you know scared worry you know all of a sudden um but i was living in a farm over in florida in the spring hill area and the farm was four acres nothing was living there beforehand and we built um, a little place and that's when the (laughs) that was the big ones (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> now my father my grandfather is a is, is is a medium he's a psychic as well so he's a psychic medium i mean he can see um spirits he can talk to them he interacts with them it, it's crazy um and he he was the one person that i use as a mentor and a guide to help me overcome anything that happens like he'll tell me things like wait a minute i did see that so how do you deal with it? He's like, look at this, look at this, make sure it's this way. If it's not, then that's bad. You need to do something about it. So he direct, he, he instructed me. So my grandfather was the, um, very powerful in his right. And then my grandmother, his wife was more of a psychic. So he was, she was able to predict, um, time, place, situations that would come premonitions, you know, uh, mm. my gra- my mother is also a psychic medium. <laughs> But she was more into the mediumship because she was able to see the physical with her physical eye. She would say, oh my gosh, why is my grand- Why is my dad here? Why is he here? Why is he, he's outside standing? Do you yeah. not see to my, to my, uh, to my father? And my father's like, no, he's out there. Who are you talking about? <laughs> it's my father. He came, he came all the way from Tampa. And he's like, no, I don't see no one. Come to find out. It wasn't even her father. It was her grandfather. She oh, wow. never met him before. It was like, it was like bomb. Like, wow, this just happened. For her, it was that way. It was, and, and, and it just seemed like, it's a, like a, a tradition. Like everybody is just having something. My sister has it too. She's more afraid of it. So she kind of like runs away from it, but she's had her own experiences herself. She just gets scared. You know, mm. I welcomed it. <laughs> I'm a different yeah. because it was. It's like you know that saying that says, um, "I know how to say it in Spanish." It's like "de suta pero de gusta," so that means it scares you, but you like it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so yeah. it's like you want to see. Okay, I want to see what's going on here. What's this department like? 
how can I explore more? Because I don't want to be afraid of it. Because I was afraid of it for so long. You、mm-hmm. know, let's conquer this. So that's that's how it all began. It was more of a family situation, and then I was just so sensitive. I was seeing stuff, and then I was able to be guided. Yeah. And for those who are sensitive、um, or intuitive, psychic, medium,、um, I I would have to say, so was I. I I've always had the sensitivity growing up, as far as seeing things, seeing people. I, whether I tried to confirm whether they existed or not, I don't know. I'll, I'll probably、yeah. know that.、But、I never really asked anybody. Being the only child, you know, and you know, I didn't always have somebody. Is do you see that? You do. You know, I, I never really had that confirmation.、Mm-hmm. So I guess I don't know. I guess as we get older, I, the spook factor seems to be a little bit more prevalent. But then we kind of. Now, then, as as a as a medium or a psychic or an intuitive, we kind of have a little bit more discernment、mm-hmm. on making that decision and making that call. Going, yep, that's a spirit. But then also, you know, the longer we're in in as you know within this field, we kind of train ourselves not to be scared, so to speak. No. Yes, it's like the more you're surrounded by it, the more you are able to get almost familiar with it, and then the more knowledge you acquire, the more you can、um, approach it. That's how I view it. Because for me, like for example, there is this situation that happened the other time where I used to work in a downtown area where it was known for hanging people back then. So there was a、mm. lot of deaths. Very much, and it was spooky because at times I would stay late, and you know the the keyboards were just typing. It felt like it was typing, like it, you hear the sounds, and the monitor screen was just turned on. It was like eight o'clock at night. No one should be here, and there was no update. Updates at twelve at midnight. So. <laughs> What's going on? You know, <laughs> I would like try to look at the surveillance to see if like you can actually catch something. You know,、yeah. but. What happened was is that at that one time, you know, and I do feel like what they do too is when you're at your weakest, they do like jump on you and see if they can dig deeper. Now, if you have the ability to kind of jump back and be, be- better in like the will and the strength, they're like, okay, I'm not gonna mess with that. But this one was following me. This entity was following me for a week, and it's,、um, I would say, a good. Um, I don't know how you would measure it, like far as a human body, like the the length of a、uh, five feet. Let's say five feet. That's、yeah. how far it stayed away.、Hmm. How it looked was the most creepiest thing ever because it was dark. It was dark. It had jagged teeth. It had no lips. Wow. It was sunken in, and it was just watching. It was just standing there, and and it was the creepiest thing is when you're sleeping. You know it's there. It's watching you.、Mm. But for me, I had the strength that you're not going to take me. You're not going to overwhelm me. You know, like it made itself known. But it's like, dude, you can't have power over me. I already know. Yeah. You know? And it just、yeah. stayed for a week and left. Those、huh. are the things that happen. They come and visit, see if they can, like almost like a vampire or a leech, how they get on. And if they can't get on, they move on. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I I get visitors all the time. I mean,、uh, some friends that you know, that are most commonly, you know, in my home, will will send some. Sometimes they're di- and、uh, different entities too.、Mm-hmm. It's like a, ma- a magnet for just random spirits just passing through. It's like I don't know. It's like what am I like a bed and breakfast? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's like it's like a little lantern. You're a lantern in the darkness, and bugs are just coming. You know? Yeah, that's yeah. how they are. They're just all that. <laughs> it's crazy. Oh, and speaking of that, because you're so open to it, I was here at my house. This is just current. This is just recent. I was pregnant, and one night I heard four knocks on the window in my bedroom. Four knocks. I'm like, oh, that's just me thinking, right? My、yeah. husband heard it. He heard it. He got up <laughs> and looked for the gun and looked around. Went to the surveillance camera. No one was out there. That's how crazy it was. I was spooked. I was like, 
four knocks, not just one, four. So that was like repetitive, you know, like that was like, I am determined to get your attention. Yeah. And that was the second time that happened. The first time it happened, it was just me hearing it. The second time it was now my husband heard it. Huh. So that was the craziest. And he took the gun. Like my husband was a skeptic in the beginning when we first met. And then he started seeing everything I was doing, everything I was telling him came true. And it's like, oh no, I now I believe. Yeah, I, there's nothing I can't say now. Wow. He believes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what so um what was the I I wouldn't say scariest. What was the most eventful paranormal experience you had that really just shook shook you to the core and just I don't know, you just you maybe still today just get goosebumps just thinking about it. Well, <laughs> the biggest <laughs> event happened. Like I think the most happened at the my uh, the farmhouse that I used to live in. Um, and then afterwards there was another event, but this was the most. I still remember it to this day because it was so creepy. Just imagine when you are in a situation that you're you're vulnerable. You're in the bathroom. You're showering, right? Yeah. You're vulnerable. <laughs> um, you're in the shower. I was about maybe like ten or eleven years old, and we had these conjoined bathroom, which you know it goes my bedroom and then my sister's bedroom. It doesn't go to any visitors. It's just our bath. Oh yeah. You know? uh, yeah, the bathroom in between the bedrooms. Yes. That way. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Exactly. So. Um, what happened was is that I was just showering and that place was very haunted because I would hear my voice, I would see images, I would see visitors and all this. But this was the most creepiest event that ever happened to me. And it was, was when I looked back, I saw my sister. Hmm. Like, like, like this, right? She was just smiling. She didn't say a word. She didn't say nothing. She was just looking. And I said, like, get out, get out, you know, get out. And... When I turned around again because I was, you know, getting, a, you know, trying to get out, she gone. She disappeared, mm. and I, I didn't hear no door slam. I didn't hear, I didn't see the door open, like you know, if she left it open. And when I ran out because I was mad, I was like, "Why the hell did you? Why did you come in there?" <laughs> yeah. You know. So I got my, I was in the towel, literally running and looking for her, and I found her. She was on the other side, on the other side of the house, in my ba mom's bathroom with her doing whatever woman like you know hair stuff wow. she wasn't even near I was, it was just the craziest part <laughs> wow <laughs> <laughs> that's that's similar to what one of my experiences many many years ago um, yeah crap i think i was maybe only 12 13 years old oh we'll see. Yeah. yeah um it was in the Orlando area, Orlando Pine Hills area. Fairly oh, okay. decent sized house, one story, around bedtime. And um, in the bathroom, the most vulnerable spot. <laughs> but I believe I was closed. I, I, I just, I, I think I was getting, like, getting ready to brush my teeth or something. Mm, okay. And the door to the bathroom is closed. And, um, I hear a knock. Uh, actually, no. I hear a knock on the window next to the bathtub. You know, like, and thinking that my mom was outside taking the dog for a walk. And I'm thinking, oh, okay. So I open up the window. I'm looking outside. I don't, mom, mom, where? Are, I don't see anybody. There's nobody. Okay. Thinking it was a trick. Close the window. And then I hear a knock at the door. I was like, Ooh. I'll be right out. Well, just seconds later, I open up the door. Nobody's nobody there. No one's standing there. Nobody even answered when I said anything. My dad's laying on a couch, sleep. He's out, gone, just sleeping, dead sleep. No pun intended. <laughs> um, and I'm finishing up. I go go across to the house and my mom's asleep yeah who was that exactly <laughs> just like a knock on my window <laughs> Ooh, they just trying to get your attention yep. <laughs> yeah yep. my i think that was the freakiest thing that i've ever experienced when my sister was like all of a sudden 
there. Like, I didn't hear no movement, no nothing. She was just there, and then she was just smiling. No words, no nothing. Hmm. It took the apparition, or yeah, the apparition of my sister, the, the look of my sister and everything. Yeah. Now that just freaked me out. There, there are said to be entities out there, not necessarily evil, mischievous, mm-hmm. you know, mischievous entities, spirits, um, could be jinn, it could be, you know, I took a whole assortment of them and stuff, um, that, you know, through legends and stuff that, um, can make themselves appear to be something or someone familiar. Uh, to us and just play tricks on us just Mm -hmm. you know just uh you know appear to be someone that we're that we're familiar a family member or whatnot and just yeah play joke uh, practical jokes so to speak yeah just get a good (laughs) laugh for them (laughs) yeah yeah for them um i've always thought too and uh, through some 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 research too and um, some historical cases that these entities also um malevolent not necessarily but mischievous can also be the um the the minions of the ones that are really mischievous really dark that those are the ones that are creating the um the fear in us and make us fearful yes yeah, so once like we get that us one, up. yeah once they build that fear up now we're vulnerable in order for the other entities to come in to take over What's uh, what's your thought about that? Um, I definitely know that they do try to put fear in you, and when they put fear in you, then you become almost like a host to them. Hmm. Like they can do whatever they want. I've had scenarios where, when I was, um, well, I mean, there's so many occasions, but let me just start with the farmhouse. I was exercising and just doing some sit-ups whatever and all of a sudden i get this creepy you know when you get so scared and you um your blood just rise you know it's just like that the, the hair rises and it's like you, you feel like petrified in a way that's yeah the, that feeling like that had overwhelmed me in a split of a second and i'm like wow something's here <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was like, hell no, I'm not, I'm not sleeping by myself. So, and it was that night. It was about like nine or 10. It wasn't even that late. And I went to sleep with my sister that night. And there was another situation when I was living in another place, not too far from it. And they would like, now this one had a lot of activities. You know, there, there was like even jiggling the doors flickering the lights the footsteps things falling off the shelves it was just the smelling of people you know when you smell people that's yeah. that, it was so so crazy and now when i would i would sometimes sleep with the radio and on with some music but the crazy part was is when i was laying down i would hear it but when i so it stood up like oh gotta go turn it off it was it was off so it's like that, almost like different reality of some sort. And then, you know, a guy, so it was just so many things that were trying to eat at you. Yes, and it and it caused me personally to become angrier when I allowed it. Does mm-hmm. that make sense? It's like you, bec- you get in a more darker place mentally and um, you just don't, you feel like you're in a cage. Yeah. When I had to step away, around 20 years old i was able to leave my house and just kind of put myself out of that situation i still hung with that thing and that thing um was so prominent one time that i woke up and it was like okay i woke up one time on my side like this and i saw an image of a woman with black hair and it was gruesome yeah. Now, but the problem with that was my body or my mind thought was so horrific it put like a black circle around its face like it was blocking that huh. yes and so i mean i would hear voices i would hear kids run jumping on um the furniture and everything but 
but I was still not in a good place. Once I finally got on my own by myself, because I was living with my ex-husband that time, when I was living by my own, I was able to find this peace within me. And when I finally found this peace, I found a will, I found courage, and I found strength. And when I finally found all that, it was like a, a big igloo of protection. Yeah. Nothing was able to penetrate. And then I was able to decipher which was not me and which was that. An entity trying to play toy with me. Huh. Yeah, so it is when you see a lot of activity, you have to be aware. Are you being manipulated a little bit? Mm. Because that's 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 the big thing because like they don't speak like we do. Spirits do not speak. Spirits telepathically speaks to you. And how do they do that? Well, they have to read your mind, right? Mm -hmm. So they already know what's going on in you. And these uh, bad spirits, they tend to pick they pick what is scary and become that image. Mm -hmm. So if you overcome that scariness or that image, they have no, they don't have any like strength over you or power over you. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Because <laughs> one, let me, oh, let me tell you one story. <laughs> <laughs> I had a demon that came to me once because somebody sent it to me. I'm not going to say who, but somebody sent it to me. I was able to see clear as day. It was a swine. Huh. Pink skin. Face like a pig. It looked like it was sweating. And it had like, like chunks of stuff on it. It was just disgusting looking. That's how it was. And it smelled like garbage. We could not find the source everywhere. My husband even smelled it. We went all through the house. The garbage was sent. Oh, I got goosebumps. <laughs> 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 the garbage was taken out. We looked under everything that could possibly hold anything. Nothing could find the source of the garbage, right? Mm. So what happened was, um, oh my gosh, turn it off. <laughs> I know what I'm going with, but what was the tale? <laughs> A smell oh. of a smell of trash, garbage, waste. What was the other story before then? <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, it was them taking over you. Okay. Yeah. Right. So, this smell of garbage, this thing came over, and it was trying. I was able now to decipher because I really had that power to see the difference, discernment. Mm -hmm. So this thing came right, and I was able to decipher that was something bad that would just cannot be. And I wasn't so scared of it because I knew what it was. Um, and that's just one story of that kind. And but besides that, because that was the creepiest one, I was able to get rid of it, and I banished it. I banished it. I relocated it. I, you know, you can't take away energy. You just have to move the energy. That's unfortunate. You can't just like you're gone. You know, you got to change the energy in some way or move it in a different location. Yeah. Now. When I was laying down, I closed my eyes and a face came up to me. A woman with picked with a ponytail and it was sandy, brownish, more darker. And she, she came up to me and I was scared. And she, she fed on that. She got closer and closer. And then I was like, wait a minute. So I started opening warmth. I started getting like the, almost like the chakra, the heart chakra. I just started like bringing love out, right? And so I did that and it disappeared. Huh. Like it got afraid of it. It yeah. vanished completely. So that's what I use to, even today when I banish things. Love is their fear because then they have to see what they have become. Mm -hmm. They don't want to accept it. They yeah. want to continue the misery. Now the banishment of this demon beforehand was helped or assisted by my grandfather. My grandfather helped me take care of it. And that's what I'm telling you when I, my grandfather would help me with mentoring and such. Once you know how to deal with these things, you know how to overcome it and you don't allow the fear to overtake you to become their pawn. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. That's cool. That's yeah. cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I've had, have you ever heard of a hat man? I'm sorry. Yes. Yes. Hat man. I had banished one of those. Really? And it's, <laughs> yes. It was stuck on one of them. A friend of mine that had closed a vortex and got rid of an ancient uh, entity that was haunting the house of her huh. friend up north. So I told her, I instructed, because she's psychic as well. 
but um, I was I get information from the spirits how to do things. Like yeah. I have my grandfather still with me telling me how to do things. So I told her to do certain things. She got rid of it, but she did one fall. She did not protect herself. Ooh. Yes. Yeah. So she got something and it was watching her from afar and it just grabbed on. I was able to tell her the whole details, what it looked like. And she says, yep, that's what it is. And we banished it. And it's, it, it's like it almost got attached to one little thing in her, one sec- yeah. security. And then how we knew it was so powerful too is because it was showing itself to the kids, her kids, Ooh. her husband. Wow. Yes. So we got rid of it, though. <laughs> now, now before before we continue and segue into the next the next sort of topic, um, we'll be right back. We're going to uh, uh, do a quick commercial of one of our sponsors for uh, for our shows this Halloween, and um, we will be right back. We'll see you in a bit. Greetings, doll lovers and horror fans. I am Master Dully, the Doll Master inviting you to my house, my house of dolls, where the dolls come alive and the horror begins. going to pick up on um the paranormal and the investigative aspect so you you have some um uh, have you done any investigative work or helping clients um i would with say paranormal more activity so. i would say more so helping clients um i did do some investigation there's just one time it was spooky and i didn't i i don't know if i really wanted to expose myself to things that can't possibly come on me. So that's why I do the banishment to help people. I'm like trying to heal them from all this thing. So there's this one time we went to Savannah, Georgia, and we did an investigation. Mm -hmm. And like, we first went with a group just to kind of know the hot spots, you know? Yeah. Um, And then we found this one place where this demon came in and it was just this house that was being built in the process and it, it and it took a form or it possessed a child and it made the child fall down into a spike and, oh. hit. and I literally felt pushed away from it like I don't know if it's my guardians but they were pushing me away so they wouldn't get close to it huh. but I was able to see the image of the boy yeah. And he was on the roof looking down on us. Whoa. He was smiling at everybody. Like it's if as if everybody was looking at <laughs> <laughs> You don't know what's going on. Yeah. <laughs> wow. But yeah, play with fire. <laughs> I'll come. Yeah. But yeah. And it's been reported that that place was people would die. A lot of people would die in there. Huh. Uh, family members, close relatives, even people who worked on that house. Yeah. So it was it was super super creepy but like super like malicious it had a lot Mm. of darkness towards it so that was the creepiest um now i i would have a lot of experiences with the paranormal that i didn't really have to look for them because they came to me you know so it was a lot of situation with that when um at one point at one of my houses, I was like 
since I already have activities in my house, I looked into that. You know, I tried to see the source. I even meditated just to pinpoint who are you, right? Mm. So this one house, there is this man that would do this, like just staring at you like this through the <laughs> mirror, through the mirror. Oh wow! I was sleeping. Yeah, I hated the mirrors in my room, and it was one of those closet that had the, the doors were the mirror. Yeah. <laughs> How about those apples? <laughs> yeah. So I, that was facing me all night, and then there was a situation. So with that, I never were able to come over that because I found out later an old man did die in my room. The previous owner died in the room that I chose to live in, <laughs> to be in, and that was the man. So he was just haunting. He was very territorial. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Huh. Yeah. And then when I went to visit my parents at the same house, after a while out of there, I、um, slept in my sister's room, not my room. <laughs> 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 Maybe there's a difference, right? No. As I was laying there, I heard the doorknob jiggling. It was jiggling because somebody was trying to open. I locked it. I don't know why I felt the need to lock it. I locked it. It was jiggling. And okay, so I went into my my abilities to see through my third eye what it was going on, and it was a cloaked figure. It was I could not see its face. It was cloaked, and he、mm. was trying to seek entrance into my room. Yeah. Yeah, and then of course I prayed and I, I I pushed it away and at the end I don't know how long I prayed I probably prayed for like thirty forty minutes, but it finally gave up and turned around and walked away. I see, literally was seeing all this through my third eye, seeing it walk away and it stopped the jiggle. I mean it jiggled that door knob. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And, Especially and, like those those really old doorknobs that just have a lot of play in them, and you're like, yeah, 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 yeah. It's like, dude, <laughs> we know you want entrance. We're、well, not gonna have it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that、uh, was the biggest. That that was one of the big ones.、Um, oh my gosh, I would hear voices. Like I was just a magnet to these entities, and. I didn't have to investigate because they were doing it to me. When I was doing a spiritual class,、um, like a mentor, so I can develop back then, we would do EVPs. We would try to investigate.、Mm. We were trying to do things. Of course, nothing came at that point, you know. But we were able to, like, I don't know. I felt like I was able to see it more so my third eye, and people were able to validate all I saw, like people's. Dead relatives, or this, this, this—they're、yeah. all just validated all, but we just couldn't catch it. You know, it, it, it's like this—it's like a was it sound, sound bar or sound box, sound box? You、yeah. know, when they, they oh for picking up using like the radio, the hacked radio type thing, yeah, where they can talk like, through the radio. Yes, yes, yeah, we the, using that, like the ghost box. Yes.、Radio. Yes. Yes. Yeah, you know, where the radio just completely goes through the、um, all the channels and stuff, and、mm -hmm. it, it picks certain frequencies. And as it's going through the frequencies really quick, what it's doing is it's capturing whatever frequencies they're 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 able to actually use for communication. There, the utterances happen on those frequencies, but because it's So you remember those little flip books where you、mm -hmm. you like you draw a picture and then you flip the page and you draw another the same picture but and it's like 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 those old fashioned animation type flip books. It's similar to that.、Mm. What it on one page is basically it it it, it operates like that as the as the radio is going continuously flipping through all the frequencies through time. It's trying to capture those frequencies at every cycle,、mm, that's and as it's doing it, you're going to hear a particular utterance, a, an、mm -hmm. answer to something like "yes" or、yeah. "no" or "get out," <laughs> <laughs> you know? or a name, or a name. Yeah. Oh yeah. And then we had the ones with the dots. You put a, like a light 
in front of a wall and there's mm. dots everywhere. Oh and, yeah, the laser yeah, the laser field or something like that. Yes, we were using yeah. that too to get them to go in that and then also uh, of course the EVPs trying to to find out if they were near or far. But I had another person that was there. He was like, let me get into all this investigation. He had all the equipment. That's mm -hmm. what he was bringing. That was his equipment he was bringing. <laughs> it was so cool. Um, but yeah, that's one of the big ones that we did for investigations. But be by, besides that, I would get situations where, um, you know, when you have blinds and all of a sudden something goes through it. Mm. Yeah. That happened recently to me. Yeah. That happened just recently. Huh. <laughs> I don't have to look for it. <laughs> <laughs> they find me. Yeah. Um, but um, there was there was this one time I actually got saved by a ghost. Mm. Um, yes. So I was driving down a dark, it was like a back neighborhood. It was coming from the east to the west to Tampa side. And I was just going to the back road instead of going to the um, highway. And it was super dark. There wasn't much light. And I was like, why, is, why am I not seeing anything? I just feel like I'm going endlessly. There's yeah. no stop sign, there's no light, nothing. And all of a sudden I heard a scream, stop. Like Whoa. a scream, stop. And I was like, okay, I put the brakes. Like I pulled the brakes. I would have hit a semi truck right there whoa yes can you imagine that yeah so i was i was like oh god <laughs> a little bit <laughs> yeah. yeah 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 and there was another time that i was even younger than that and i was like probably 22 21 when that happened but before then i had another scenario where my mom she did a lot of old time things so she went to to the place to pay the mortgage so it would take 30 minutes to go right so she didn't want to go by herself she asked me Veronica, would you like to come with me and i was like sure why not i didn't feel why should i not say no right and then as so all the kids started showing up in the neighborhood on my thing right she comes to me again as i was between the house and a tree that had the swing set and the kids were there. And I looked at the driveway towards the road. And she comes and asks me, Veronica, would you like to go with me? I just want to go And I looked at her, the driveway and I looked at the kids. And all of a sudden, I felt someone was pushing me, pushing my head. Yeah. I said, like, kids. So I was like, no, mom, I don't want to go. I want to be with the kids. Right? That's, it's just, that weird sensation hmm. that I had. Come to find out, my mom went with my grandfather as company and got in a horrific accident. Horrific. The car tumbled over three times, um, sideways, forward, everything. The, the roof of the truck caved in and the gas was leaking because the truck was upside down. Whoa. They had to do the iron, you know, that, that opened the oh. door. Yeah, Jaws of Life thing. Jaws of Life. And she was helicopter to the house. To oh, the wow. S staples, stitches, braced, everything. It could have gotten worse because the the thing was, is it, it caved right in the middle of the drive, like person, the driver. Yeah. But somehow something pushed her head sideways. So it would cave right in here, right in here. What? And if you would have went, I would assume you would have probably been possibly in a portion of the vehicle where you may not have survived. Mm -mm. I was small. I was like really small. I was a child still then. Compared Oof. to that horrific accident, I would probably be dead. Or wow. in a worse condition. Yeah. So those are the signs where like the spirits will get involved if it's not your time or if they just like, no, no, you gotta, you can't do that, right? Um, there's, th remember I was telling you about that house that had that old man that passed away in my room? Yeah. Well, the same sensation of fear in something coming, like the footsteps, the clattering. I was hearing all this in my room as I was laying down in the early mornings <laughs> and nobody was in the house. 
and a voice, a woman's voice goes and says to me, it's okay. <laughs> well. Huh. Okay, now here's another freaky one. I was about six or seven in Miami with a relative and I was staying at her house. And early in the morning, early in the morning, my, my cousin left the room. She attended her little, cousin, her little brother. And all of a sudden I heard these words, you belong to me. Mm. That freaked me out. And I knew uh. later on that they, my cousin, her mom, did Santa Ia. Ah, Santa Ia, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> and they had a room that was always locked. They would sacrifice chickens and stuff, and they would do rituals. Yeah. <clears throat> so I was like, oh shit. <laughs> did I get an obsessor? Did I get a spirit that's now thinking that they love me or care or want to be with me or like just suppress me? I don't know. But just to hear those words, you belong to me, was what I heard clear as daylight. I wonder if they were misusing the um, the craft, too, because I'm familiar with it. And I, I know quite a few Babalaos that, um, you know, some priests and stuff like that, that are priests within that, um, that culture. And it's like, there's good ones and there's bad ones. It's like any craft if somebody takes advantage of it in the wrong way yeah. because traditionally it's the oldest it's one of the actually one of the oldest religions in the world mm -hmm. it's over eight thousand years old mm -hmm. and um but it's like it's such a loving good type you know culture really but it's the mysticism of it that we are more familiar with it but yeah, I, I, I've seen the bad. I've seen it used for bad, and I've seen it used for what it was originally intended for. Yeah, so I, I, maybe they probably... Yeah, they dabbled that. into it and started using it and started casting spells on people. It's true. Yes, I believe so, because um, I feel the sense of selfishness. The, the, the use of the Santeria that they were doing was more for selfish reasons. Yeah, yeah. And that always turns around, man. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen instant around. karma happen when people use it the wrong way. Yeah. 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 So, and, mm. I till this day <laughs> on, I still don't recall what was that. Oh, yeah. and um, I don't know, like every time I'm talking, like more, more stuff come. Like, you know, when you're going throughout <laughs> life, these little yeah. ones just kind of go back to the back. <laughs> and then you're not bringing it forward, and all of you're just coming to all the information. Mm -hmm. There was one time I went on a date with someone at um, somewhere in Tampa. At, at a, uh, we went to the movie theater, and in the movie theater, it was during like probably at twelve or eleven, so nobody hardly was there. You know, it's early. Usually they go at the evening time. So I went and went to this movie, and it was just him and I. And we're like, oh, no one's here. He was saying that. I was like, I look behind me. No, there's one person right there. <laughs> <laughs> I just saw the silhouette of a person. He looks yeah. back and says, I don't see no one. No one's there. I looked back. Nope. He's gone. Wow. I saw the silhouette of a person. I did not see their features. Mm. So it must have been a shadow person. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. That, and that, that's <laughs> the strangest of all places of fun see some entity just sitting there like they're waiting you know i like yeah. take it please <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly uh, and i've had requests from ghosts too mm. i had requests from them this one woman came to me and she told me i want a coconut why do you want a coconut <laughs> I, didn't answer. I want a coconut so i gave her one and the next day it got um moldy oh. it was just for that huh. it was just for her to satisfy she left afterwards these, yeah. these ghosts have or spirits have these strange interests it's like one thing they want it's maybe a memory of what they used to do in the past yeah, yeah. coconuts are often used too as uh, certain offerings oh, really? a lot of a lot of cultures i think the uh, southern caribbean santeria 
Um, Caribbean. Uh, Korea, uh, in, <laughs> My I think in Hawaii. I forget the, the Polynesian, uh, Southern mm. Pacific. Are are coconuts when you cut them in half? They're used as bowls and stuff, but it, it's used in certain items for offerings and stuff. So maybe they were I, like, "Hey, what a coconut." <laughs> and, and vodka too vodka have yes. you heard of the scenario of to cleanse someone with vodka mm -hmm. that's what yeah. the spirits told me to use to banish this hat man yeah yeah the clear yeah the the uh, the vodka and sometimes too in the caribbean it's the the clear rum the, mm. the, yeah the really clear rum um oh. uh, but yeah it, mm. tobacco Ah, yeah. Natural tobacco, not that crap yeah. that they tell us stores <laughs> everywhere. But. Yeah, my, my family is Cuban, so they are always uh, with the tobacco, and they have all this information with the Caribbeans. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And my grandfather uh, was the one who told me to put the coconut to get the demon out. Oh, okay. So you put a little honey next to the coconut so it can come. And once after 24 hours, you remove it completely off your premises. Huh. And it's gone the next day. Wow. Mm hmm. Huh. Because yeah. yeah, I, I use, um, I haven't done it for a while, but I work with a lot of Native American spirits. And that's normally what they'll do. They'll let me know when it's ready. They want, if they want something, they'll let me know. They'll, I'll hear knocks around the house when the guys, I live alone. So if I hear knocks or hear, talking or whispering or whatever i know what they're getting my attention for something so normally it'll be like either a combination of the four of the, the tobacco the sweet grass the sage ah there's another one i forgot what the fourth one was cedar i think it's cedar um and then burning them in all the uh, mm. four cardinal directions and stuff and then doing a blessing and then doing an offering of um normally it's i think normally i think it's rum but sometimes depending on depending on the spirits and stuff it's usually a whiskey okay some sort of it's, it's a spirit um mm -hmm. pun intended yet no pun intended <laughs> because that's why it's called spirit um <laughs> And then, you know, burning the candle, you gotta, you know, burn the candle and let it just mm -hmm. burn down and stuff. But, um, yeah, normally, uh, hasn't happened in a while. So I guess they're, mm -hmm. they're, I guess they don't need anything yet. But as, as the summer goes, goes, moves forward, we'll probably get more There's activity and stuff. In. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Especially if there's going to be storms. If we're, I'll know if we're going to get a storm here in Florida because they'll let me oh, know ahead of time. Oh, wow. Did they, yeah. they tell you what type of storm it is? Um, or how soon it is? I, I won't usually get an... Uh, kind of like before... I mean, it's kind of hard with a weatherman. I don't even think the weatherman can really predict the weather anymore. But <laughs> we'll definitely know if there's going to be a hurricane and stuff. I'm surprised there's nothing in the, in the Southern Caribbean yet. But <laughs> if there is one on the way, as it usually about a week or two out, well, they'll let me know go and prepare for this one mm. and then i'll okay. do some offerings in order for them to help protect the property they, oh, they nice. this is creepy actually no it's not, well it might be um they the indian that i that i the indian spirit that i work with that actually dwells on on the property where i'm at he um he was like you he, he's like dude you need to cut your trees cut your trees you you just cut your trees when they say do it <laughs> you better do it and sure enough less than a week later we got hit with hurricane ian oh wow yeah but do you see how and, cryptic they are just cut yeah it. no explanation behind it no exactly. context yeah <laughs> just do it that's what they do just all the do time. it like, just do it okay follow trust the situation trust the process yeah um and that segues yeah. into the question your your thoughts and your your ideas on when we get these signals when we hear something feel something it doesn't matter what people call it intuition the voice that we need to listen we we need to pay attention to these things you can save your life 
Mm-hmm. You can very well save your life if you mess into it or save you in a very sticky situation. I, it has saved me <laughs> mm. many times. Couple of times already, and I think also like some people may not be so sensitive enough to actually hear it, but just、yeah. to feel it, like you know that gut feeling. If your body is like vibrating to the frequency of like I got to do this, do it. Yeah. Like if you have two choices, or if they got an opportunity was presented to you, or if if all of a sudden you have a f- sense of feeling that something bad's going to happen, like. Just feel it. Just go、mm-hmm. it. Because it's like the spirits, the ghosts. They speak to your spirits. It's your job to be sensitive enough to bring it into the three D realm, yeah, physical realm. So you need. I do know, in a, it's fact that the your conscious, your unconscious, sometimes go separate. Your unconscious is your spirit, basically, and your knowledge of all. Stuff and the reincarnations、mm-hmm. of all living stuff, and then you have your conscious, which is your thinker, your earthly, fleshly being. Thinker,、yeah. You know. Now, what happens is sometimes they're conflicting with each other. This one is telling you, "Hey, do this because it's gonna、mm-hmm. save your ass," or also they're the one who speak to spirit. So spirit is telling me, "Do this, let's do it." Yeah. Does that make sense? Oh yeah, yeah. And sometimes, sometimes it's so subtle. That I would normally people don't pay attention to it because it could be a thought, it could be a general thought, because we all have this inner dialogue going on, and that's always we can't shut the brain off. We, we always have this inner dialogue going on. It could be this just general thought, like staying out there. And, I mean, not even be in the backyard, but something goes. You need to cut the trees. Why should I cut the trees? You know, people don't question, question themselves. We don't question our thoughts. We just go, okay, whatever, and just keep on going. You know, people think that your mind is just running completely without no thought. Like it's just、mm-hmm. always running. But in reality, first of all, you got to think about your stress situation. But like, if、yeah. you're meditating, like when I meditate, and I allow my mind just to go, it's like free falling. You have、mm-hmm. to free fall. You have to let it go. If your mind wants to think about one thing, let it think about it. Then it moves on. Yeah. And now you're giving your mind free to receive the messages.、Mm-hmm. So I do psychic readings. I do mediumships, and I'm able to describe the person as is because it's such a. It, it, I I it moves as if I fall back in a way, like I just let go of myself and just go forward to what their energy is, and I'm able to describe. Face features, habits, color of the hair, color of the eyes, everything. Like whatever they want to show me, I show them in details, and then I tell them what type of person they are,、yeah. and the person validates it. So it's like there these images of these spirits or these spirits come forward. It's just sometimes you have all this junk in front of you that you didn't allow yourself to wash away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's it's. You gotta let it go. You, you can't. You can't be in control. Mm-hmm. That's why. We、um, we are. <laughs> yeah, that's why meditation is so awesome. You know, when you when you start to master meditation, because a lot of people go, I don't know how to meditate. I'm like, well, first thing, and even in mediumship, it's pretty much the same thing. It's like you got to learn how to step away from yourself. Step away from all this theater that's going on around you, and just focus in on your breath, and just focus. And forget to think. Don't think. Just do. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. And, and, and if, you, if you feel like your head is just going crazy because you have so much stuff, you know, like some people have busy head mind.、Mm-hmm. Just let it run its course. Yeah. Just, okay. Acknowledge it for a minute. Oh, sweet. Next one. Sweet. Okay. You're done. There's no more. That's yeah. Now you're empty. And then when something straggles behind, like this weird just thought that you just can't let go, then you just stop and go, okay. Why? You just ask the question. Why? Why are you here? What is this? What does this mean? And you'll get an answer. Yes. Eventually. Yeah. Yeah.、Yep. Uh, Either、uh, and just different forms of it too. You can get the impression. You can get a visual. You get words sent to、mm-hmm. you. They choose to talk to you how they want to、uh, express themselves. Yeah. Yeah.、And、sometimes I'll, I'll um. There's just one time I was driving. With my ex-husband, and I 
you know, we're, he's an ex for a reason. And there was, I didn't understand what the situation was. And then somebody gave me just one word, what it was. And I looked, I had to look it up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I had to look it up. It was crazy. And it was that. <laughs> wow. So those are the things. Yeah. So you have to like really be open to whatever information you're getting could be possible. The message of your spirit, you know, like I can have people spirits moving my cur my curtains or or playing with like my, my two-year-old's toys and they had done that they played with it um mm -hmm. they'll move things you'd be like oh that's just my head no it is and i know what it was i have uh, another child running around here a spirit child oh wow yes i have a spirit child that's running around in this household right now <laughs> yeah. i don't know if it's because my son is picking like inviting or it's just because my son is a child yeah huh and that's crazy too I mean, it, and it, it's spooky when i even talk about this because it happened it happened last year mm -hmm. and i think it just happened now that's which is Ooh. why i'm confirming online to make sure amazon just didn't drop something off because um yeah they did okay false alarm but last year <laughs> i was doing because i have i have earbuds in as a monitor and everything goes through this this mixing board so when it comes to hearing everything outside of the studio it doesn't necessarily it's very muted mm -hmm. so when i hear like a thump or something happening in the house i go what the hell is that what but last mm -hmm. year i had a show and um, I wasn't even recording yet. I was getting ready to do the show. And I heard something speak through the microphone here in the studio trying to get my attention. And I'm like, what the hell was that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that would have been nice like, if you had gotten it on record. Well, yeah. <laughs> And I did have a show where um, the guest that was on, this is on the normal programming for the seance, and the entire broadcast was an EVP. Every time she spoke, the guest spoke, you can hear the EVP coming through her microphone, her end. It was like this just weird EVP. Go Every time she spoke, the EVP would would continue on. It's like I I just didn't have the time to download all of it. I mean, I do have the download, I do have the audio of it, but I've never had the time to just throw it into a mixer and break it all up and put it all together to see what it was actually saying. Oh, that would have been nice. I, like, I was responding it, to her. Yeah, exactly. And I left it to her paranormal. I left it to their or anybody else's paranormal group to go, hey, we'll try to decipher it. So. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> so before we wrap up the show, do um, you have any type of uh, any, uh, like, um, and, and also being a psychic medium, do you have any uh, takeaways before we close? Yes. Um, my suggestion is do not fear anything that surrounds you, even if it's physical, if they show themselves, if they move something, don't fear it because you have more capability to, to overcome that because even though they're trying to instill feel, fear in you, you have the ability to push back. Mm and you're able to take care of yourself and protect yourself. And you're also able to see why. Sometimes these spirits just want communications. Now, if you're ready for it, then go ahead and try it, but always protect. One number thing, always protect. And the best way I would suggest is not only praying to encase yourself in white light and you know calling upon your protectors that you have, but also open the heart. Mm. This yeah. warm, but this warm love, just push it all out so you can have a good experience. Yeah. Um, Absolutely. You don't get 
also attacked or yeah. you know, some little leeches on you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Klingons. <laughs> yes. yes. So be careful. Anything is possible, but protect yourself. Always. Anything. Yeah, anything. Anything is possible. Even reality, no. too. Yeah. Not reality. Yeah. I think. Yeah. And I believe we do have a one of our shows, too, for um, True Ghost Stories this year is um, Archbishop um, Ron Enright, which is an exorcist with the um, uh, Catholic priest. priest. So, of of the Catholic Church, uh, the real exorcist. Wow. So, that's, that's going to be some interesting stories right there. Man. Mm -hmm. That's creepy. <laughs> when it comes to perception and reality, when you said reality, there's certain things that he talks about when it comes to reality. It's like reality just goes right out the window. You don't know what's real. You can't, you can't trust your own, you can't trust your eyesight. You can't trust anything. It's all gone. That's how much power they, these demons can, can put on you. So, but, um, so we'll, we'll have your contact information in the show notes. So if anybody okay. is out there that, um, can seek, seek your assistance and help and reach out to you and stuff like that, if they have some, uh, paranormal stuff going on, yeah, might I mean, be able to help. I, yeah. And then, <laughs> For every person that I take care of as a client or just, you know, even if I'm just talking to help them, spirits always come and like, I always have an army of people mm. of spirits to help me help that person. So if there's a cleansing or if there's spiritual guidance or anything like that, they will tell me, okay, do this. Just like how they told me to do the vodka on that talk to have me. You know, just yeah. like they told me during different, different things, everybody. It's like a patient. Everybody has their own situation they need to take care of. Not every situation is the same. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Cool, cool. Veronica, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for having me. You're very I welcome. Appreciate. Very welcome. And um, even though this is ahead of time, but happy Halloween. <laughs> happy <laughs> Halloween to you too. <laughs> a lot of adventures. Hopefully we get more... Um, more experiences too coming our yeah. way since Halloween's coming up. Yeah, I it, this is the second year doing the show, uh, this series and stuff. So yeah, keep it consistent. And then people will people will uh, will start to notice. Mm -hmm. So you might notice and noticing the paranormal activity that might be going on around you. Stay tuned to this show and um, you know five broadcasts through uh through the month until the night of october the scariest is on october night or not october night the uh, halloween night so every thursday um of the month until the night of october and we do pick the scariest the most spookiest and scariest uh to be broadcasted on on halloween night so that'd be nice we shall see <laughs> <laughs> awesome oh gosh i can't wait for yeah. that yeah <laughs> veronica once not. again namaste blessings my friend thank you namaste stay in touch too. and um yeah let me know uh, i haven't been out to any psychic fairs lately but uh, i Going intend on doing more. something before the end of the year definitely mm -hmm. especially October. yeah yeah <laughs> all righty then thank you so much you're welcome you take care thank you everybody for watching true ghost stories we will see you next time